Hi everyone, this is Steve Goodwin with Anchor Test video number 124. I'm going to compare two anchors today, a 24 pound Delta to a 26 pound Genuine CQR. Both anchors are original and I'll mention the CQR is several decades old and in unused condition. Uh, both anchors are fairly light on their tips, about 4 pounds each. Uh, for the Delta, it's 17% of total, and the CQR is 16% of total. Again, that's uh, quite low. The only anchors that I've tested that have lower tip weights would be Danforth Style and, of course, the Fortress. I'll mention that CQR anchors have kind of a mixed reputation amongst boaters. These, these anchors have been around for 80 or 90 years and are were heavily, heavily produced, and for many decades, this was sort of the best anchor for, for cruising-style boats, and they've... They've developed a bad reputation amongst a lot of people, and I think part of that is warranted. I think the low tip weight and the general nature of this anchor, that it's, it's, it's known that these anchors will have trouble setting in difficult to penetrate seabeds. Um, I think another problem, though, that these anchors have had to face is in over time and use, the hinge point rusts and wears, and what, what occurs is the angle between the shank and the fluke or the throat angle, it opens up. And I'm pretty sure that when that happens, the performance of the anchor suffers. But this is a brand new copy, so we don't have to worry about that here. Um, an another reason for the poor reputation likely comes from the fact that this anchor has been so heavily copied. There's just been countless other manufacturers that have done their own version of CQR over the years. And a lot of people will simply look at an anchor that hinges a, uh, you know, a convex anchor with a hinge and just call it a CQR. Okay, let's get to the underwater footage. I'll go ahead and weave the clips from both anchors together so we can get back-to-back uh, -back apples to apples comparisons between these two anchors. Okay, we'll start off with 180 degree reset testing in the sandy mud. This is the 24 pound Delta and we see on the initial set it was uh, instantaneous and held about a 500 pound burst. We'll see here on this first reset, the anchor dislodges and actually leaps upward, flies a bit. And that's a result of using a very long bit of nylon in the road. And there's a bit of a rubber band effect, sort of violently uh, snatching that anchor uh, out of the seabed. But in any event, when things slow down, the anchor does recontact the seabed. But you see there's a fair bit of dragging. Uh, but the anchor did reset, as you see here, every single time. This test is really about whether or not an anchor will mud foul. And it's, it's been my experience that the convex fluke anchors, well, mud just doesn't stick as well to them, and they generally do not have any trouble with mud fouling. Here's another good image of uh, the anchors kind of scooching along. That's probably a result of this really short scope, lightweight chain, and the angle just wasn't right. And until the boat slowed down to about two knots, the anchor really wasn't able to penetrate. But once it did, it did just fine. Here's the CQR on its initial set for this same test in the same seabed. I can't explain why one image is sort of a green hue and then the previous was more blue-green. But in any event, that, that set was just perfect. Here is a, a typical reset for this anchor, and I'll just go ahead and say it's a little better. Uh, the anchor sets faster, and it was the, uh, after each set, I gave, gave things a good burst, about 500 pounds, and it just felt more secure and solid uh, up top side from the boat. It just I could, I could easily tell and make the determination that the CQR is just a little bit better than that Delta. I went ahead and gave the Delta a 3.5 out of 5 on my ranking chart for this test, and the CQR gave it a 4. You'll see both those numbers at the end of the video when I show you the chart. Here's the Delta in the sandy mud for a straight line holding check. We've got 685 pounds of thrust going here, and the anchor was fully buried, I believe. I, did, I looked at it pretty carefully. I didn't see the shank there until it lifted and released completely. Uh, here's another set that didn't fully bury. That was about 620 pounds of thrust and the same thing, a full release. Uh, this is some, some weeds after repeated attempts to reset it, but it could never repeat that, that holding number again, again, likely due to those weeds. Anchor did 1,650 pounds under the winch, which is odd to be so much greater than with the propeller thrust. Normally those two numbers are closer. 
Here's the CQR with a propeller thrust check. Uh, the anchor held 945 pounds before a full release on this first set. I'm going to slow down the camera speed just as it emerges here so you can see that it was fully on its side. You can see the tip just emerging there. These uh, convex anchors do tend to be less stable in roll. The anchor did reset, however. I didn't have to pull the anchor up to achieve a good hold. In fact, it held the full Monty. This is 1,325 pounds of thrust. It's the most the propeller can pull. There was a blob of mud right here, and it fell off just before I got the camera on it, but the tow was clean. I recorded a max winch resistance of 1,600 pounds for the CQR, and if I averaged the propeller thrust numbers with the winch numbers, divided by the anchor weights, I ended up with a score of 2 for the Delta and a 3 for the CQR amongst the other 20-pound range anchors here in the Sandy Mud. Here's some brief clips of the Delta in the Veer test in the Sandy Mud. Right now it's undergoing a uh, swing to starboard with 535 pounds of baseline thrust and it's just creeping forward a little bit. It actually kind of slowed down toward the end of that 180 degree Veer. Uh, but on completion of the veering portion, I then straighten the boat out and ramp up power and it made it up to about 945 pounds of thrust before that release. So that, all in all that was uh, quite a good Veer. The CQR was quite good in the veer also, but you'll notice right there there was a bit of a lurch. That occurred at the 60 degree mark, so I gave it a little bit of a demerit for that uh, little bit of instability. But uh, when the veer was completed and the straight line portion ramped up, it was holding here solid at uh, 1,325 pounds. Ended up giving the Delta a 3 and the CQR here a 2.5 out of 5 on the ranking chart. Now we're over at the cobblestone seabed with the Delta. This anchor doesn't have a strong tendency to roll upright here. In fact, it spent a good amount of time on its back jostling from one side to the other, but it eventually finds just the right spot to get a tow underneath, and it did okay. Uh, none of these anchors do well in this, in this cobblestone, so it's just relative to the other anchors, it was average. I gave it a three out of five on the ranking chart, and it did hold 165 pounds of no boat motion thrust. Here's the CQR on the cobblestone, and although it was never upside down, it spent very little time right side up either. Uh, the anchor had a very strong tendency to remain on its side. It most of the time had a toe, the toe was dug in a little bit and it had rocks on it. Uh, so it was trying and when it made its 135 pounds of holding, this was the, the position, basically on its side with a pile of rocks on it. So it's doing something. Uh, one time, however, it did actually roll upright, but it, it didn't stay there. It was just for a brief moment, and it recorded, well, it, it was trying to hold 165 pounds of thrust, but it really didn't. It never quit moving, and this is the spot right there. It's upright and totally vertical, but then it just keeps creeping ahead and keeps on rolling over to the other side, and then it stayed there for a lengthy drag. So I give this anchor a 2 out of 5 on the ranking chart, so I'm going to say the Delta is a little better in the cobblestone than the CQR. Now I'm deploying the Delta anchor in the stop mud at Scow Bay for a straight line holding check. That's 135 pounds. As stated, it's 135 pounds of thrust and it's holding, but that's all it can do. And this 24 pound Delta along with the 44 pound Delta, it's very easy for me to say they are the worst anchors I have ever tested in this soft mud. They just do not work. Okay, buddy, don't on that. Uh, there's 165 pounds and we're moving at 0.6 knots, 1 knot, 1.5 knots, 1.8 knots. Here's the CQR on deployment in the soft mud with its 80 feet of chain coming out of the bilge locker. And there's just no question that this anchor is much better here than the Delta. Full 
Here's the delta in the clean, loose sand for a veer and straight line holding check. Unfortunately, on the way down, the camera got fouled, so we're not going to see much of the anchor in the beginning. We do get a good look at this crab family that's scurrying around on the bottom. But I went ahead and carefully checked how much motion there was, and there wasn't much. The anchor did complete a 180-degree veer uh, with just some continuous, very small motion as it went on around, so that was good. Then in the straight line portion, as I ramped up power above 500 pounds, the anchor just kept moving faster and faster and faster. It never did release, but it did uh, make it up to about two knots of boat speed at 1,300 pounds, and that's when I cut things off generally at, uh, at, uh, th at, at two knots of boat speed. I call it good. Uh, the anchor came out of the seabed uh, quite clean. That's pretty common for this uh, clean, loose sand seabed. I, I should mention, though, it's it's not perfectly clean. As, as you penetrate farther, there is a binder, and sometimes an anchor will come up with some seabed on it. 25-pound CQR clean sand, 30 feet water, 150 road, 80 feet chain, veering test. Okay, with that deployment and initial set out of the way, I'm going to show you the veering portion here at eight times camera speed so we can get an idea, well, a little easier idea of how much forward motion there is. And there is not much. Uh, we can see with the track there that there is a, a, a motion to the right or to the starboard along with some motion going forward. Uh, the very best anchors at this test will just stay more or less in one spot and not move more than an anchor length away from their original spot. But nonetheless, that's a good that's a good result. Now this is the final moments of the straight line check. Everything straightened out and just pulling uh, dead ahead. And it uh, held the full boat thrust, 1,325 pounds, but it never quit moving. Always had a little bit of motion. This is just real-time speed here, and we notice that the shank is not burying. I have to believe if this anchor had a more narrow shank that wasn't didn't have that big knuckle where the where the hinge is, that perhaps that anchor would bury much deeper and and make a better holding power. So for this clean sand veer, both anchors will get a rank of three out of five. And then for the hold, the straight line holding portion, I'm going to give the CQR a three and the Delta a two. Here's a look at the latest ranking chart for the 20 pound range anchors. I won't go over all these numbers for the CQR and the Delta, which we see there in the, oh, the middle or lower middle of the group. But uh, I'll, as always, you can freeze this frame or take a screenshot of it and peruse this at your leisure. I will mention there's a couple changes to the chart, though. Uh, right in the middle of the performance columns there, we see a, a column called Soft Mud Reset with a bunch of question marks. And that's a new column. I intend to take all these anchors back to the soft mud, probably with the short chain road, and do a standard 180-degree reset test and see what happens. What used to be in that very same spot, though, was soft mud veer, and I removed it. And it's kind of complicated why, but in a nutshell, uh, none of these anchors failed at that veer. Um, if they could hold the baseline, they would complete the 180 degrees of veer. So I was left with just trying to determine how much motion there was during the veer. Since there wasn't any releases, I was I just had to somehow determine a little bit of motion and lately I haven't been able to get images uh, no 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 the water clarity is just just atrocious so it's just been a bust trying to decide a, a proper ranking I am trying to tighten up my my numbers and get things that are as absolutely as factual as possible so I was really didn't have any choice I had to eliminate the soft mud veer from the 20 pound range anchors the bigger anchors oddly enough there are failures there several anchors will start the veer and then they'll release so i think we got good data for the big anchors with that test but not the case here also in the uh, right side of those in water tested performance columns we see two other new columns hard sand setting and hard sand holding and that's kind of a wish list for me uh, it's been something I really want to get done at some point, somehow, and I've got a couple tricks up my sleeve. I think I'm going to be able to come up with something. 
I won't reveal it until it actually happens. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave those question marks there in those columns just as a reminder for me and everybody else that this work is not done and that there are other seabeds out there that could really affect the rankings of these anchors overall. The last change that you may have noticed is down at the very bottom row is a new mystery anchor. And as you can see in the performance categories, this is an exceptionally poor anchor. It is by far the worst anchor I've ever tested. I'll say that it is a very common anchor. We've all seen them, and they're, again, they're, they're present on lots and lots of boats. So you'll just have to tune in next week to find out what that anchor is. Okay, so what's better, Delta or CQR? And of course, it's always going to be dependent on what kind of seabeds you're in, but I'm pretty comfortable stating that for the Pacific Northwest and the seabeds that we typically have, got to go with the CQR. Um, certainly there's lots and lots of CQRs in use here. Uh, last week I just did that big survey where I counted up all the anchors in this area, many hundreds, and uh, for sailboats, CQRs are by far the most common. And I wouldn't say that Port Towns and sailboats are a bunch of marina queens. A uh, pretty salty place and most people get out and about and anchor a lot and they use a lot of CQR anchors to good effect. So I've been focusing on the big wall of 20 pound range anchors lately and I think some of you might be wondering what is going on with the 45 pound range anchors and the promised winch testing. And I've actually purposely delayed that project because of poor water clarity. I really want the imagery from this next series of testing coming up to be as clear as possible and that won't happen for another month or so. So it's that project has is, is been on hold but it is by certainly no means shelved. Uh, in addition to the 45 pound range uh, normal anchors we've also got that group of uh, increasingly large Bruce anchors for that scaling study. That needs to happen as well in the sandy mud. And once again, I'm, I'm waiting for water clarity to improve. Okay, I really appreciate everyone's interest and donations to these anchor studies. We'll see you next week with that mystery anchor reveal. So long.